We're gonna take these stock headlights and turn them into this. What's up everybody? I'm Tyler and on this channel I build automotive content and today we're taking my stock headlights and transforming them for $198 into this. Then we're working on this car specifically and transforming these headlights. The skills that you can learn from this video can be applied to other cars. Now the reason that I'm even doing this in the first place is because I have the second version of the Cayman and unfortunately they don't make aftermarket headlights for my version of the car. And I've scoured all over the internet and I haven't seen anybody modify the stock headlights. So there was a lot of learning that I needed to do. This video has actually taken me quite some bit of time specifically because of that. And as you can see, I've successfully done a headlight and now I need to do the other one. And I'm making this video so I can show you guys out there who have, who have been 987 Cayman and want to modify your headlights. Or if you're in a similar situation where you want aftermarket headlights, you want them to look cool and uh, you don't really have any aftermarket options for your car. So let's talk about the total cost. I said it was $198 for me to make these lights specifically and that's because I already had all the tools and things that I used throughout this video to make these headlights. Now, if you don't have any of these tools or supplies, the total cost for this is $432 to get everything that I used in this video. If you're interested in all the stuff that I used for this video today, there will be a link in the description for everything. There's one last cool thing that I wanna show you that these headlights do. As you can see, this is our DRL, this is the halo. This is what it looks like when the car is on and running all the time. However, it's also switched back for a turn signal. Pretty sweet, huh? Disclaimer, before you do this to your Cayman, and I'm not being an advocate saying that you should cut these open if you have no experience. It's not that difficult, I will say. However, that analysis is based off of my skill set and things that I have done previously, and I know that I'm capable of doing. These headlights are $1,000 a piece to replace from the factory. So, be careful because if you ruin them, it's a, it's an expensive mistake. For this install, you're gonna need a Dremel or some sort of cutting tool, a soldering iron with some solder, some wire strippers, a plastic welder, a tamper-proof Torx bit set, some heat shrink, a lighter for said heat shrink, your choice of LED that you're gonna be installing for this install, I used an 80 millimeter switchback halo from Diode Dynamics. You're gonna need a resistor because we're installing LEDs, spray paint, some extra wire, some electrical tape, JB weld, and a connector. And I'll explain that later. The total cost of everything that you see here is $432. All right, I'm gonna interrupt this video from future me because I'm getting deep into these headlights and I realize maybe most of you don't care about the Cayman stuff and you just wanna learn about the lights. If you just want to learn about the lighting and the halo and how to install that into a light, Click this time code right here. It'll take you right to the lighting section. If you're interested in along for the ride with the Cayman stuff, we'll get started with that now. Okay, back to it. So I have the light right here. And normally what you would do is bake these to release the lens from the housing. The lenses are held in by sealant. And when you bake them, that sealant gets more malleable and you're able to pry the lens from the housing. However, typically with Audi, um, BMW, Porsche, more Euro builds, their sealant is really aggressive and more often than not, um, you'll melt the light before you actually heat up the sealant. So unfortunately, to get these open is you're gonna need to cut them. So I have this Dremel oscillating tool. I used on the last headlight and actually liked it quite a bit. It was my first time using this tool and it just made a really clean cut. Before you cut anything, make sure you remove things like this. This has the seal around the headlight. You gotta remove this uh, little weather seal like I said. Then what you're gonna do is get your cutting tool of choice and then cut the lens free from the housing. Now the way that I choose to do that, what I've had success with in the past is cutting right around this seam if you can see that. Now what you don't want to do and be very careful about if you're cutting lenses for your first time is putting the tool too deep into the plastic and hitting the stuff on the inside. You also wanna make sure that you're not cutting into the lens uh, flange itself. So 
I'm gonna rotate this onto the side. See how there's this flange right here where my finger is pointing to? You wanna cut in this crevice beneath that so that it cuts the whole flange and lens free. You don't want to cut into this flange and then realize that the lens is still attached to the housing. Now it's time to cut these uh, headlights open. <laughs> Now that I've separated the lens from the housing, we can start disassembling the light, doing all the electrical, and this is really where the fun begins. Pick this lens up. What we're gonna wanna do is sand this down, and all the loose plastic off of it. Uh, I'm not gonna show you guys doing that. You guys can, you know, obviously figure out how to do that. So for the Cayman, for the 987.2, what you're gonna have is three bolts that holds this housing on. One bolt right here on the side, one bolt, on the opposite side, and then there's one bolt underneath. For all three of these bolts, what you're gonna need is a Torx T20 bit, and that's gonna be a security bit with the hole in the middle. take the bezel, get this prepped and ready to go to paint, and now we can also see everything that's exposed inside of the headlight itself. First we're going to remove the bezel for the projector so we can get that prepped and ready to paint as well, and we'll paint both of these at the same time and do all the light work on the side. So to get this bezel off, there's two screws. We're going to flip this around. On the back side of the headlight here, there are four bolts that you need to undo with uh, these two clips, one on the top, and then there's another on the bottom. As you can see, we have the back of this housing off. The ballast for the projector has three bolts that need to get undone and this will come off. Now this may vary depending on what headlight you actually have. Okay, once you undo those three bolts, the ballast should come free. This will expose, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but there are two bolts. I'll probably include pictures right now, um, just so that you could see this. There are two bolts to release the front bezel for the projector. So now that I have the two bezels off of the light, I have the main bezel and then the projector bezel off. I can prep them and get those ready for paint. I'm not gonna show you guys how to prep and get those ready. This video's main purpose is to show you guys how to disassemble this and then build the LED part. So I'm gonna throw these to the side, prep, get them ready, get them painted, and then I'm gonna start working on all the LED and wiring for this. We're now at the section of the video where everybody should be on the same page. We're on the lighting section, so the people who skipped ahead for the LED light, you're in the right spot, and the people who have been following us through the entirety of this Cayman specific build, we are now going to install the halos into this light. This is an 80 millimeter switchback LED halo from Diode Dynamics, and as you can see right here, so this is everything that it comes with per set, so you get all this and you get those in the pair. So you'll have another one of these, but obviously I already made the other headlight. So what this does right here, it controls your LED switchback. These are not a resistor for an LED. So if you've ever installed LEDs and they don't um, flash properly or whatever, when you use your turn signal, that's because you need a resistor. Our resistor is over there. Shout out Chris from uh, Flyride for helping me out with these resistors. Links in the description specifically to those resistors so you can get them and use them as well. This has a four wire connector. The white wire is the 50% power, red wire is the 100% power, yellow is our signal for the turn signal, and then black is ground. So pretty straightforward. Um, it needs 12 volt power, so you pull 12 volts to whichever one you would like to use, 50 or 100, or you could do to both, and run them off different switches, and then the turn signal obviously just your turn signal and then ground. I'm only using the 100% brightness turn signal and the ground, I'm not using the 50% brightness. So our first step, taking out the turn signal completely, 
undoing all of this tape and like they they bunched together a few of these cables so i'm going to undo all these cables pull out the turn signal completely cut off this connector and then we are going to take off as you guys can see there's a bolt right here that's also that same t20 security torx bit same as the rest of the bolts that were right here um you're going to take this off unscrew this pop it off it doesn't go very far until you release all the cables that um, connect to the harness right here so there's a few cables that I have to disconnect just to push these wires out and get this to come off. Um, and then after that, we will trace these back, pull them out over here where the connector is, figure out which pin goes where. I also have a wiring diagram that we'll reference to to figure out what wire does what. And uh, then we will tap into the turn signal into the ground and then we will repin this connector to put a new 12 volt power source to the DRL because there's actively not a DRL inside this headlight. The DRLs are located somewhere else in the car. If you have a DRL currently inside your headlight internally, you can just wire it to that. If not, you'll have to do what I'm doing right now and repin pin it somewhere else make sense hopefully now it's okay that we don't pay attention to which wire is which because we have no idea which one's power which one's ground so we gotta like i said undo all this pull it out the other side after we cut off the turn signal what you're gonna to wanna to do is unclip all of the, the clips that are right here like I was talking about so you can push them back and fish them out the side. This, like I was saying before, is held in by one bolt. It's just a screw on twist cap like any other like type of light. And see how they're all kind of bunched up with tape? What we're gonna to need to do is get the tape off of these so we can fish these two wires out and figure out which locations these are going to on the back side of this uh, harness to figure out what pin does what. I know which one of these wires is which. I'm gonna go refer back to the diagram though, just to be sure. All these, like I said, we will shorten all these because they are way too long and we will tidy these all back up when we are done. See, so yeah, I refer back with the diagram. I have labeled my power for my turn signal. Um, what we are now going to do is leave that wire for now. What we're gonna do is come back to the dy dynamics, switch back, LED um, driver right here. What I like to do is hot glue this inside the headlight. Now, if you aren't doing this for the, for the Cayman specifically, you gotta find somewhere in your headlight that that will work. Um, for me specifically, I like to mount it right here onto the side, and I'll show you guys that after I do it. Uh, thing to note is if you are following this with the Cayman as well, and you don't like this specific spot, remember that this headlight oscillates on a motor because it aims itself most headlights don't do that but if you're following this for the Cayman yours probably does that as well so make sure that that's out of the way another thing that you want to pay attention to is which side you're putting uh facing where so the side with only three wires is going outwardly towards the halo because the halo only has three wires however the back side of this connector has four so you want this towards the back side because this is what we'll be plugging into this oe harness right here As you guys can see right here, this is where I have hot glued the LED switchback driver. See when this headlight articulates all the way to the side, there's clearance. It does not touch when it articulates to the other side. Again, it does not touch. So for me, that is the perfect area to install that right there. Now I have these four wires. The red is going to be the power that we need for the DRL. The white is if you want that 50%, so I won't be using the white. The yellow is for the turn signal, and obviously the black is for the ground. Now the yellow, obviously I marked over here. This yellow wire from the Diode Dynamics LED driver is going to go to my turn signal over here. So these two wires I will then solder together. This red wire I'm going to be putting a pin on. I'm going to be repinning this harness. So as you can see from the harness, there is a slot missing right here on number 6. I know you guys can't really see, but these are labeled on the side. And you can see this is slot number six right here. It does not have a pin. So this red wire right here, we're going to be sticking in this pin right here and putting another pin on it so that we can repin the harness on the car as well. So we power for the DRL and just have this a plug and play. I 
know it's gonna be very hard to see and this is gonna be difficult for me to show on camera so I'll put a picture up on the screen right now. That pin that we put on for the power, we're gonna be putting in the empty slot of the connector. Now there's a purple, I'll label it on the screen, a purple clip. You need to stick a screwdriver in here at the very top of the clip and you can just gently pry up. And when I say top, I literally mean at the top of the connector. It, you just slide it up just ever so slightly, enough so you can get the pin in. And once the pin goes inside, um, you're good to go. You can put it back down. We can close this. And then, as you guys can see, I just got it in there. We now have a new pin. And I'll show you guys a picture of that on the screen now as well. Just because this is, will be very difficult to show. Now that we have power for the turn signal, ground, we repin the original connector. Now we need to install a resistor. The reason being is because we have an LED halo and we're using it as a turn signal. The car is gonna think that uh, the bulbs are out. We install these to mitigate that problem. I'm also going to hot glue this inside the housing as well. I'll hot glue this in right here and run the wires back. Okay, so these wires, both um, positive, negative, it doesn't matter which one it goes on, it just needs to intercept your turn signal and the ground. So after everything's all said and done, this is what the inside of the housing looks like. Um, all the wires right here are routed with the OEM wires. And this is relatively clean. Wires aren't everywhere, they're routed specifically where they're I'm supposed to go on the inside right now what we have is our resistor clean two wires and they route straight back and they go underneath where these wires are supposed to lock and go they go perfectly underneath that little tunnel where all the rest of the wires are coming out of now the only thing we have left is just uh these long wires that connect to the the halo itself we're not going to clip these just yet we're going to get power and everything run to this and uh, plug it in and make sure it works after we know that this absolutely works with everything that we've done we will then shorten these wires quite a bit because they are just ridiculously long so what i've done so far for this led is i found my original power wire for the turn signal and the original ground from one the diagram and then two disassembling the plug and finding where each wire goes the identifying which one is which i then wired my ground to the original ground that the turn signal was on I then took the power that the original turn signal was on and wired that to the signal wire to the LED, the switchback module. We put a resistor in between that. We added another pin to the OEM connector for the power of the DRL. I know it seems really involved and this video is probably going to be really long, but it's not too complicated and it's pretty basic. So getting an understanding of what this LED needed, where it needed a signal wire for a turn signal, it needed a ground and then a power source for the DRL. I don't have an active DRL inside of the headlight itself for this car, which is why I added another pin to this OEM connector. Now I got lucky because my pin, um, the connector for the Cayman already has an empty slot. So most headlights have an empty slot. I know on the Genesis I had an empty slot. Doesn't mean all cars will. So if you need to maybe repurpose one of the pins that you're no longer going to use or add the DRL somewhere else. It's a lot of work, but it's not that complicated. It's just kind of being nitpicky and doing all the nitty gritty stuff. This is all done. I can bolt this back together. The DRL isn't going to work right now because we need to repin the OEM connector on the inside of the car. And I will show you guys how we do that right now. If you have a 987.2, you should have this fog light bezel, which has two DRLs. Actually, this is your main daytime DRL. And this is your nighttime, I, night, nighttime running lights, I guess you would say. <laughs> I don't know the proper term for this one. But if you pull off this panel, you can just, it's literally just held in with clips. There are two bolts. There is one right here. They're Phillips head screwdriver. After you undo those, you can pull this module out. And behind that is a connector. There's going to be two wires on that. One should be yellow and one should be brown, okay? The brown wire should be your ground. Pull that out. What we're going to do is splice into that and uh, solder another wire. And we're going to run it all the way underneath this well up into this main headlight housing. And if you can see inside here is the OEM connector. And my finger right now is pointing to the slot that is missing. 
corresponding to plug number six on the back of the house headlight housing itself um, when you're gonna add a pin to this connector on the inside there is a little rubber grommet that they put in here to weather seal that you need to stick a small screwdriver or something through the front of this to poke that little rubber stopper out the back in order for you to put that pin inside there I promise this will make more sense when I do it and I show you what I'm talking about Just like I said before, yellow and a brown wire. This brown one is going to be your ground, this yellow one is going to be your power. Carter's chatting up some chick over there. I thought I would say something. Now I have a power wire routed all the way down here. We're going to connect them. <laughs> Simple enough. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, we have power. All right, so as you guys can see, this is our new pin um, that we just wired into the DRL at the bottom of that fog light that we took out. Now, right here, you gotta remember to keep the weather stripping on it because these should be waterproof. You really don't want water to um, tamper with your headlight whatsoever, so big key. Now, like I said before, to keep this water tight, they have put a rubber seal in here. What you're gonna need to do is take a small screwdriver like this and um, push it through the back. All right. As you can see, And it's gone. Well, it was a clear little rubber piece that was in there, and now we can uh, put this new pin in. All right, that is in, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so at this point, we've repinned the OEM connector inside the car. We've repinned the OEM connector on the headlight. We've wired in the turn signals. We installed the resistor. What's left to do now is we can just button this thing all back up pretty much to the point where we're going to put the bezels back in. What we can do is test the headlight. We haven't shortened the halo wires yet. Just plug it in to make sure that it works. If it works, then we can hardwire in the halo to these connectors, minimizing the amount of wires that are free inside the headlight. And then when the paint is dry, we can seal back the headlight. So it's been a long journey. If you guys have been following this entire time, I really don't know how long this video is. It is quite a bit of work to get this done. It's not hard, it's just a lot. But the end result is gonna be awesome. It's a custom one-off set of headlights. If you're following this exactly, you'll have headlights like mine, but if you're following this and installing a different type of LED, all you need to do is wire it accordingly. It's time for the moment of truth. We've worked so hard for this moment. The headlight is plugged in, the halo is plugged in. Like I said, this is just a test to make sure that everything is working and then we can do the final installation. I'm gonna set you guys on the tripod. We're gonna turn the car on and see if it works. I've buttoned back up the headlight, rear cap is on, the ballast is mounted back on, the projector bezel is now on. The halo wire is now shortened. Now what I'm gonna do is mount the halo right here. Now the way that I do that is um, with JB Weld. My reasoning for using JB Weld. One, I've used fishing wire in the past and fishing wire over the course of time with a lot of vibrations tends to f to fall off or fall down and i really don't want to have to reopen these headlights two when you use fishing wire you still have to tie it to something you have to make it look clean with jb weld i just put it on the back of the halo itself and push it onto the front of the projector after it seals it's completely clear even if you get clear JB weld, you don't see any if you use the right amount and it's mounted on there flush, clean, and it's, and it's never gonna fall off. That's the reason I use JB weld.
So that's what I'm gonna do right now. A lot of you may ask, how am I hiding these wires? So typically what I do is I wrap them black like this and I try to hide them with the contour of the bezel. So I will rotate this a little bit like kind of to the side like this. And when I put it over, when I put it over the headlight like this with the bezel and then line it up, I'll push this wire back, kind of tuck it behind. And then when I put the whole bezel on and the headlight on, that's exactly how it's done right here. And you'll, you'll never see it. See. Super clean. It's been a few hours, the halo is completely cured on there. The paint has been drying all day. We're ready to put the lens back on and plastic weld it together. So if you are not familiar with plastic welding or don't know how to plastic weld, you can also use other sealants, adhesive. I know some people use silicone. Um, I plastic weld these because I like them to be bonded back together at the same strength that they came off and so that they're sealed in no water condensation or any type of other thing gets inside. All right, so it's been a long day. Obviously you guys can see it's getting dark out already, but we're finally finished. The headlight is completely sealed. We've done all the wiring repin the OEM connectors and everything is plugged in, plugged in, ready to go. If you guys have been following along this entire time, I hope you guys learned something. We're gonna get a first start right now and then we're gonna look at both the headlights working. All right. Look at that. Both the DRLs are working. Look, this isn't even the night lights. These are just DRLs. That's how bright they are. Left turn signal. Right turn signal. Hazards. Look at that. This is what the lights look like when they're off. Pretty sick. As you can see, we have the black vinyl around the trimming on this headlight. We don't have the black trimming on this one. I'm gonna leave the vinyl around the headlight for tomorrow. I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, so it's been about a week. It's actually not the next day. I've been traveling for work, so I didn't get to finish these. Now we're here, time to put the overlay on. I got these from KI Studio. Hit him up to actually do a promo video for this, specifically for these builds, and he told me he wasn't interested. I guess I'll shoot you guys over that way anyways, because I like the way that these overlay films look. I'm also using a hair dryer instead of a heat gun. I used a heat gun last time, and it just heated these up way too much. Let's try and get these overlays on. How to ruin your vinyl in two seconds. Taking, just taking it off. Here we are, the final look at the headlights, 100% complete and on the car. Here's what they look like all the time with the daytime running lights on, they look absolutely sick. We also have the KI Studios vinyl wrap around the headlights to finish off those bezels. I think that is an absolute must because it makes them look 10 times better. It's been a long journey building these headlights. I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you guys learned something and some of you um, were able to go out and build your own headlights because of this or have been inspired to build something even better. Nobody in the 987 community for the point twos specifically have done this before. So this is the first ever look at a modified set of a 987.2 headlight. Again, we're gonna go over, we have the DRLs and we also have the switchback turn signals, which look absolutely killer. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and going through this entire journey with me. Comment down below, tell me what you think of the headlights and subscribe because we have so much more content coming out for this car. It's absolutely insane and I cannot wait to share with you guys. We also have more content for the Genesis. That's gonna be it for this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm out of here.